I just took all of these screws out except for one, and uh, that's basically what's keeping this thing from falling off right now. As soon as I took the last screw and loosened it, the whole thing shifted, so this whole thing is just ready to come off. Um, now there's a, uh, I think there's a pin that it sits on over here. So, right now, it's kind of precarious because I, I need to uh, kind of take the weight off of it with one hand so I can get this screw out. When this comes out, Hold on to this. Oh, hold on. That gear is not coming with this. That, that other cog wheel, so to speak, that the belt drive, that the uh, back gear belt drives, that's not moving. Oh, I see. This housing has a big hole, big, big oval shaped hole, so that stays behind. Piece of cake. So to speak. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tilt this head back up. That's why this casting won't want to just fall off on me. That should be good enough. Yeah, that's heavier than it looks. This belt says Dodge. Dynasync Goodyear. <laughs> it's funny, it looks like a little timing belt from a car, a really small one, but I mean, is it possible that somebody actually. 240H100, that's a pretty clear part number right there. That'll be easy enough to look up. All right, tilt the head back down. Again, lock two of the nuts so that the head won't suddenly do that on me. Here's a cover that just comes right out. Guess what holds that cover in is when that whole unit is screwed on top there. Oh yeah, now I can really see the rust in here. Let me get the camera back over. All right, well, so here's the mystery of what gets engaged underneath here. This big gear right here is meshing with a gear on the bottom of the shaft that this cog wheel is on. So all of your shifting happens via this right here, being able to move up and down on this shaft. So, when I flip this lever. So, under this gear is where the actual, this shaft goes through here under the gear here somewhere and engages something to make something happen. But, what I'm thinking is, maybe it's right here that this is actually rusted to this. Oh no, wait a minute. Looks like maybe that whole. Looks like maybe this whole gear is supposed to move up, and what will happen is when this moves up, this gear will stop meshing with the small gear in there that you guys can't see, and that would be the neutral position. So where is that it's supposed to move? There are a couple of holes in the... Oh, yeah, I can see through the hole here. I can see the end of the shaft. I can see... what it's supposed to engage. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna... spray some penetrant in there.
problem is the gear is pretty much in the way of me seeing exactly what it is I'm trying to lubricate. Oh, that's going down inside there. Let's see if I can get this. So what's happening is right between this boss on the gear right here and in this area right here, when I spray this penetrant, I can see it run right down inside there. It's a good sign. Anybody's wondering what I'm using? This is uh, ZEP 45 NC penetrating your lubricant with PTFE. Also, this place is water, I believe. All right, so ah, nothing yet. But now I'm thinking maybe I'll tap on that. Use some mechanical jarring force on that thing. junk reamer that I use for this kind of thing. There we go. Starting to move. There it is. That's how she works, guys. Alright, so that's the neutral position. The bottom of this is no longer engaging anything, and this is no longer engaging that. This is low speed, this is now engaging this. And then this is high speed, this won't be engaging this, and right now if we had the rest of it on here, these dogs right here would be engaging the notches on the bottom of the sheave pulley for direct drive which is your higher speed all right got that fixed all right that was still sticking a little bit and I thought it should work a lot smoother so what I did was I could see through the hole here I could see the drum mechanism that's supposed to go up and down I could see the hole outside of it you know had that surface rust on it and what I kept doing was I kept spraying because I couldn't get in there. And ideally, I would take this gear off and clean that all out in there. But taking this gear off looks like it's going to be a major thing. and I don't want to get into that. So uh, by spraying through the hole here, I was able to wash down that whole side and make it all nice, clean metal. And now that did the trick because now it, it's smooth as butter. Unless you go too far down. If you go past this point here, which is not you know, by design where it's supposed to do. But... As far as in here, it works beautiful. Not sticking at all. As a matter of fact, it's working so well that if I leave it disengaged, not in the lock position, the weight of the gear makes it fall down into the into the detent. So that is working sweet. So now let's reassemble this puppy. So the first thing that's going to go back in before I forget about it is this plate, which I just cleaned up really nice. That looks like it doesn't. So there's a couple of holes here. I wonder if those have to line up with any pins on the bottom of that. Doesn't look like it. Oh, wait a minute. All right, I just cleaned up that belt housing that goes around here, and uh, I didn't make it spotless, but I mean it was filthy in there. It's like every shred of rubber that ever came off of any belt in that housing, uh, I think, was never cleaned out of there. And I think that, that belt might have been replaced at some point, and they just didn't bother cleaning it out. Um, I should wash it, and you know, but I, I really didn't uh, want to run it in the parts washer and go through having to dry it out and all that. So it's, it's a lot better than it was. I don't remember if you saw how filthy it was inside here, but let's see now it's cleaner. Use the shop vac and just a dry brush and scrub as much of the stuff off the sides. Um, oh, and I forgot that I had oil in that oil cup, so I need to not leave that on the floor on its side. 
Anyways, so my dilemma now is how to handle reassembling this because it's going to be a bear to get this little belt in. But um, I'm thinking I'm just going to try the reverse order of disassembly and see if I can't make this happen. Now, when I took that housing off, I had put the head vertical, but I think I can just hoist it up there and hang it on the drawbar here, carefully. <laughs> uh, let's see, why don't I, why don't I just wrap these splines with this rag that I can pull out later, Catch them. Call, but I was talking about how there was a hole, a couple of holes in that disc, and I was wondering if there was a pin on the bottom of this. And sure enough, there's a pin on the bottom of this, and it has to go into the hole on this disc. So I just rotated it so that it sort of lines up there, and then I'll have a chance, a snowball's chance in hell of getting it in. All right, this is gonna move up so that that, that hole is gonna come way up here. All right, let's see. This side. Ah. This is just gonna be a lot easier for me to put this vertical so I can Move it right into position. Do it that way. I ain't the right side of the This is a nice place to push up on the casting, but then I can't reach the uh, wrench. three of these screws just in case I cannot get this to line up no scratch that I'm gonna put them all in why well because I'm gonna tilt the head back over to make my life easier installing this thing so I don't want the weight of all of this stuff I'm putting up here hanging off of the sheer strength of three of these little cap screws. All right, I think uh, I'm gonna move the, uh, I'm gonna plug this light for a minute. So I can plug in the power feed. I'm gonna run the table down the other end. Out of my way. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna replace the uh, bearings in this and uh, obviously this big bearing right here I already got the part number off of I went online and found out that yeah there's quite a few opportunities to get new old stock deals on this bearing this uh, 6212 Z bearing and uh, so I'm gonna I, I definitely want to replace this one but I believe there's gonna be another one in the top here because this whole thing this whole thing spins 
and that top. So it's got to be supported by a bearing in the top also. So it looks to me like this right here is pressed onto the shaft inside. But the problem is I've got like, I can't get underneath this to, to hold this and support just this part while I push that out. So that's not good. And then, you know, if I get underneath here, like with a puller, well, now I'm, I'm putting a lot of force on the bearing. And of course, that's the old bearing. I'm going to get rid of it anyway. But I just don't like the idea of doing that because I don't think that's what they intended for you to have to do to take that old bearing off. Maybe be wrong. I don't know. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is maybe try and attack this from the other end, thinking that maybe, maybe this all comes out through the top here somehow. So I've got, what I'm looking at here is I got four screws here. Look like they might hold this handle on. And then you got one, two, three, four, five, six screws here that look like they hold this whole assembly here to this. If I take these six screws out, I don't think that's going to do much good for me because this, is, this isn't going to end up going anywhere. So I don't know. But in the center here, you can see this is the shaft that I think goes all the way down through the middle here. There's a clip right there so I'm thinking if I take that clip off that might allow me to pull pull this whole thing right up and out separate this whole top section from that I don't know but it's worth a shot This looks like what I'm looking at right here is the bearing. So it's looking like this shaft is pushed into the bearing right here. So that's not going to want to. That's not going to want to come out of there easily without being pressed. And then the same problem. I got nothing to support it. I better take this handle off and see if I can see what's going on underneath. These are strange little screws on the top here. Or not so much the screws as the washers underneath them. Look at that. Like a hat like a high hat symbol on a drum set. Two cup washers, one on top of the other. Why why is that like that? Those act as some sort of a spring and they're crushed up against each other. Well, that certainly is going to take that handle off easy enough, so off they come. wonder if this is going to go on a certain way when it goes back on. Hey, the camera shut off right when I was in my little diatribe about the Patriots. Patriots? Did I say that weird? I think I did. Okay, yep, I'm coming up. Get ready for football. Okay, thank you very much.